Oh man, I'm so sorry I'm late. I forgot my watch. Time is crucial, especially in the business world. It can help you meet deadlines, track security breaches, log files, or make sure you don't miss an employee birthday. Sorry, Jeff. To be in sync, you'll have to configure your network switch. In this Cisco Tech Talk, we're gonna configure and sync system time in our Cisco Business 250 and 350 series switches using a simple network time protocol server in unicast mode. Next. First, we'll log into the switch, providing the username and password. Then click on the login button. Once we're logged into the switch, head to the upper right dropdown where it says basic and change it to advanced. On this switch, currently the latest firmware version 3.1.0.57 is installed. Under the system summary option, we can verify this. Now to configure the time settings on this switch, we'll navigate to the administration menu. Under the time settings menu, we'll select the system time option. Here, we can see that under clock source settings, main clock source SNTP server option is enabled. This needs to be enabled so that it can sync the time from any SNTP server. The actual time from SNTP server is showing along with the date and time zone offset. We can also see the last synchronized server is reflecting here. The mode is showing unicast and stratum level is showing one. The stratum level defines the distance from a reference clock source. If we look at the manual settings, we can see that under time zone settings, we have two options to get the time zone via DHCP, or we can select the time zone offset manually from the drop down menu. We'll need to make sure that we are selecting the correct time zone as per our location, and we'll need to specify the time zone acronym as well. We also have the option to configure daylight saving settings. Let's enable that and select the appropriate daylight saving time based on the region. If we don't need this setting, we can just uncheck the checkbox. Once we finalize the settings on this page, we can click apply to save the settings. Let's move on to the SNTP Unicast page. We need to make sure that the SNTP client Unicast is enabled. The main clock source SNTP server must be enabled for SNTP client Unicast to operate. We can see that main clock source SNTP servers is currently enabled. And we can also see that IPv4 source interface and IPv6 source interface are set to auto. We can select the IPv4 source VLAN interface and IPv6 source VLAN interface from the drop-down menu. Under the Unicast SNTP server table, we can see multiple servers are added apart from the default one, and the server is successfully syncing the time. Also, stratum levels are showing for their respective SNTP servers. Click on the Add button to add the SNTP server. On this page, we'll need to select the server definition either by IP address or by name. We'll select name for this example. Next, we'll need to enter the SNTP server domain name. We'll enable the poll interval and we'll click the apply button to save our changes. When we close the window, we can see that the newly added SNTP server is reflecting here on the page. Now the SNTP servers added on this page are fully qualified domain names. We'll need to make sure from this switch that we can resolve those domain names. In order to do that, we need to confirm the DNS settings or domain name system settings are enabled on this switch. To verify that, go to the general IP configuration menu and select the DNS settings option under the DNS menu. Here, we can see that DNS settings are currently enabled. Polling retries, polling timeout, and polling interval are configured with default parameters. Under the DNS server table, we can see the DNS server is learning via DHCP IP v4 in VLAN 1 interface. We can also add the DNS server under DNS server table here. To do this, we'll click on the Add button. Then, we need to select IP version, either version 6 or version 4. We'll choose version 4, and we'll enter the DNS server IP address. So in this case, we are entering the Cisco Umbrella DNS server, and we'll need to select the preference from the drop-down menu. 
To add another DNS server, again, we'll select version 4, and we'll specify the Cisco Umbrella DNS server again. For the preference, select 2 this time and click on Apply. Now we'll close the window and we can see that the newly added DNS servers are reflecting on the DNS server table. To save the settings on this switch, we'll click this blinking floppy disk sign at the top of our screen. We'll then navigate to the time settings page, then system time, and see that it is now synchronized through a different SNTP server. Mode is showing unicast and stratum level is showing three, in case we need to bring the SNTP server details to the default settings, then we need to navigate to SNTP Unicast page under Time Settings and click on the Restore Default Servers option. We will click OK on the confirmation pop-up window. Now we can see that only default SNTP servers are reflecting under the Unicast SNTP server table. We can also see that system time is now synchronized with a different SNTP server. Now we're in sync. Now you know how to configure the system time on a Cisco Business 250 or 350 series switch. Thanks for watching this Cisco Tech Talk. We'll see you next time.